right, Thrill Seekers, Green-Eyed Lady by Sugarloaf. That's for all my friends in Sugarloaf. So, I got a question, and since before your son burned hot in space and before your race was born, I have been his question. Anyway, here is the question. In those instances when a person is facing very limited free time, why should they do Zazen above all the other possible healthy stress relieving activities they could do such as work out, go jogging, clean the house, etc. And it's a good question and I suppose, uh, I assume that the uh, writer is very sincere so I'm not putting down this writer at all, but a lot of times questions like these are posed by people who want me or want whoever they're asking the question to to sell them zazen because it's very sort of common to try to sell meditation practices and as I was working on this very video you're seeing now I came across uh, such a thing on my Instagram it was uh, David Lynch advertising his meditate and create David Lynch MFA in screenwriting course saying the practice of TM, med Transcendental med Meditation, will help you grow personally while you sharpen your writing skills and gain access to deeper levels of your creativity, discovering how, as David Lynch says, to catch the big fish. I'm sure he didn't make that up. Uh, you meditate to get more conscious, and the more consciousness we have, uh, the more your ideas flow three, freely, more creativity, more happiness, more love, more energy, more power, more peace. Uh, he says all these things. You get happier, you get more energy for your work. Did I say that already? Anyway, a bunch of stuff he says touting the effects, the, the wonderful benefits of meditation. And one of the differences between most kinds of meditation and Zazen is that Zazen doesn't usually, I mean, I can think of some exceptions, but usually we don't try to hook you in with promises of what it's going to do for you. In fact, one of the most famous quotes, it must be in this book somewhere, uh, Arthur Braverman's book about Koto Sawaki, which I highly recommend, which has my little blurb on the back. So there you go. Uh, one of his most famous sayings is Zazen is good for nothing. And it turns out that phrase, um, God, I forgot what he says in Japanese, probably not too many Japanese speakers watching this anyway, but the person who should get credit for translating that in the unique way that it's been translated into English in a perfect way, I think, in a really good way, is Shohaku Okumura. Shohaku Okumura, who is a Japanese person who's lived in America for a long time, kind of figured out the perfect way to, to, to translate what he actually said. But it basically means Zazen is good for nothing. Uh, Sawaki is also, here's another famous quote that I love by him. Uh, the life in which you are glared at by Zazen, scolded by Zazen, obstructed by Zazen, pulled by Zazen, and get along with tears in your eyes is the happiest life, isn't it? This is the way that Zazen tends to be promoted, if we can, I'll put that in air quotes, promoted, uh, as opposed to the way, you know, David Lynch and other people promote TM by telling you what's good about it. Now, why you should do Zazen instead of jogging, what does he say, cleaning the house, uh, working out, etc., etc., whatever he says. I don't have the quote up anymore. I can't tell you. It's kind of up to you. If you'd rather do those stress-relieving activities than Zazen, then go ahead. That's fine. My teacher often kind of conflated this, Nishijima Roshi tended to say things like, he, he first got into Zazen after being a track runner in high school. And he noticed something that happened when he did long runs, that this kind of peaceful, sort of balanced state, as he called it, emerged. And after he left high school and left the track team, he found the same thing in Zazen. And what he would say, even though he would say that a, a sport is a good way to reach the balanced state like you can in Zazen, he would say that Zazen is much easier. and that, That's how he would usually leave it. Uh, to me, I think there's a little bit more to it than that. 
Well, it is easier. And I, not being a track runner or anything, I used to run around my grandpa's backyard when I was a kid. Like that, I probably could have been a track runner, but I wasn't. I became a musician as uh, so, sort of. I can play Green Eyed Lady by uh, Sugarloaf, you know, something of a musician. And I found a similar kind of thing in playing music. It's a kind of focused activity in which, in order to do the activity properly, you have to kind of leave your thinking mind behind. Uh, when I learn these track, these songs that I learned to, to do the beginnings of videos, uh, often I, I pick ones that are challenging to me because they require a certain amount of not thinking. If I start thinking about where my fingers go next, then my fingers go all wonky and they don't go where they're supposed to. And doing that kind of thing and doing it with a group of people in front of an audience requires this kind of mindset that is somewhat similar to what one develops in zazen practice. It's a kind of it's a kind of focus but a, a kind of um, you have to leave your mind behind. It's not the kind of normal way we, we think of focusing. I think when people say focus, often they mean think hard about, you know, whatever it is. Nani nani, that would be the way you say it in Japanese. Think about whatever it is that you are, you're supposed to focus on. Well, this is a different kind of thing. One thing about playing music or doing a sport is you know when you're you've lost focus when you've lost focus it's obvious when I lose focus I should show you some of the outtakes I, I throw them away after I do them but on some of these where I'm trying to play a really what to me is a fairly complicated baseline for the openings of these videos uh, there are plenty of times where I lose focus and then you can hear it you can I'm just hitting the wrong notes and blah and it falls apart and it's no good so it's obvious, and, and in sports it's often obvious too because you, you lose the game or whatever. There's something really obvious. In Zazen, it's not quite, I'm doing a, I'm not doing like a lady. I'm doing like a person sitting in Zazen, the body and the legs there. Anyway, when you're doing Zazen, it's not quite as obvious when you've lost focus. It's, I, I often say that it's a balance pose. And in a regular balance pose, like a yoga pose, like tree pose, you know when you are when you've lost balance because you fall over. You know that's that's how you know. Sazen is also a balance pose, but it's a very simple balance pose. It's the balance of your spine on top of your hips when you're sitting on a cushion. If you lose that balance, what normally happens is just something like this. It just gets a little sloppy or something. I'm exaggerating, but it'll get a little sloppy. And you might not even be aware of it because you don't fall over in, on your face or anything. I have seen people fall over on their faces during Sazen, but it's usually from falling asleep. Often when you're doing a long retreat or something, Thing. One of the things that you'll hear punctuating the silence of the retreat is a bang, and that's because somebody has fallen asleep and hit the wall, you know, with their head. Well, that's that's not usual. What usually happens is you just get sloppy. So it's a it's a very minimal balance pose. The minimalism of it is, I think, what makes it uniquely great because you're really it, it's as close to doing nothing as I think a human can get while still being alive. You know, you're, you're just trying to sit still. Even, even lying down and sleeping, I think, is doing more, usually. There's, there's a little bit of moving around and there's dreaming and all kinds of things going on than, than sitting zazen. It's very, very minimal. So you're just trying to do this one thing completely that is the simplest thing that it, it probably, that's why the practice developed because people were looking for the very simplest thing that they could concentrate on. So rather than concentrating on a sport or concentrating on working out or jogging or playing an instrument or, or all these other things where, I, as I said, the balanced state can also be established, you're instead concentrating on the most minimal thing possible. Like I mentioned, these guys are flying the helicopters that always interrupt my video. They are probably 
in a kind of balanced state too because you have to be very focused on what you're doing in order to fly a helicopter I assume I've never flown one I've flown in one but I've never flown one uh, you have to you have to work on that balance but and and of course the results are very obvious in a helicopter when you lose your balance because the helicopter falls out of the air and it's a disaster but in Zazen it's not and I think that's what makes it great and that's what makes it ultimately more powerful than all of these other things that you do that that could also promote the balanced state but there's a reason we don't talk about the wonderful effects of zazen and okay koto sawaki who said zazen is good for nothing this is a person whose life was dedicated to Zazen, and that's the reason I, I brought out this book. This has a biography of, of the man himself. He was an orphan who had a very tough life in his early years, and in his he had he was sent to the care of some uncles, uh, uncle and aunt, who were gamblers and not very good parents. They didn't really want a kid. It's not clear if they were exactly abusive, but they were certainly neglectful. And he grew up in a rough uh, part of a, a, I forget which city in, in Japan, I think it was Yokohama, but anyway, rough part of town. So he escaped and ended up in a Zen temple. And then he dedicated his life to, to Zazen practice, to teaching Zazen practice and do, doing Zazen practice. So when he says Zazen is good for nothing, he's not disparaging it. He's not saying don't do Zazen because Zazen is good for nothing. He's trying to give us a way to do Zazen that makes it actually effective. I hate even using the word effective. But he's trying to give us a way to do Zazen that is the, the proper way to do Zazen, which is not to worry about what good effects it's going to have. And the thing I, I when I see these ads, like the, uh, the TM ad by uh, David Lynch and, and these other things I see all the time, is that I think people are bound to be disappointed. You're, you're going you're gonna to incur a certain amount of disappointment because there's going to be a certain amount of people who do their Zen practice or whatever meditation practice they do, and they don't get that effect. They don't get the wonderful, uh, more power, more happiness, more love, more whatever they, you know, whatever they're advertising it as doing, and then they give up. Um, it doesn't. I, I, if zazen was actually good for nothing in the sense of like don't do it because it's good for nothing well i wouldn't i certainly wouldn't have done it for nearly 40 years and sawaki roshi wouldn't have done it for you know god i, I don't know uh, 60 70 80 years i don't know how long he did cuz he started when he was very young and did it until he was you know dead and died at an old age so my my teacher did that did it like that was dedicated to this stuff so we're not saying it's good for nothing like don't do it uh, the fact is you you give up what you expect from it giving up expectations is part of it because expectations are what drags you out of the experience of this moment into trying to experience a moment in the future or trying to make this moment align with what you think it ought to be. And Zazen to me is a practice of over and over and over again just putting aside whatever I want it to be and I always since when I was 18 years old and first started it till I'm 58 years old and continuing to do it today I always have some expectations. There's another helicopter. You know, the city of Los Angeles has more police helicopters than any other city in the world. And they cost, I just heard what they cost. They're incredibly expensive, like millions of dollars per year per helicopter, just to keep them going. And what do they do? <laughs> they interrupt my videos, and I don't know that they do that much to, pr to prevent crime. But anyway, that's my little rant about Los Angeles. But anyhow, it's, what was I even saying? It's putting aside, my, my Zazen is constantly a, a practice of putting aside my expectations for Zazen, even now, even after nearly 40 years of doing it. So, 
to answer the question of why do why not why do zazen in preference to jogging or cleaning up the house or uh, working out or whatever the the questioner said you know it's up to you it's up to you i'm not going to try to sell you on it i can only tell you that it's been it's been worthwhile to me you know <laughs> so i keep doing it and i keep on doing it and i've got no plans to quit How's that for an answer? I don't know if that was an answer. But if you want to contribute to me making better answers to questions like that, you can go to the URL you are seeing on your screen below, which is hardcorezen.info. I think it's somewhere around here. Slash donate. That is hardcorezen.info slash donate. Hardcorezen.info slash donate. That is where you will find links to my PayPal and Patreon accounts. Those are my major, major ways of making a living, and it is tax season, and I am seeing very clearly that really most of my income comes from YouTubing, and that's something I want to make a video about. I don't know if I will, but uh, maybe I will. Anyhow, that's it. If you want to contribute, you can. If you don't want to contribute, you don't have to because this is offered for free, but I do appreciate those who contribute. So we'll see you next time. Have a good time all the time. Bye. Ziggy, you feeling better? You feeling better today? You didn't throw up last night, so appreciate that. I'm glad you're feeling better. All right. <laughs> you wonder what I'm saying. Do you want to go back inside? Okay, we'll go back inside. <laughs>